Ian Taput of Cloud and Joy, a low calorie ice cream that is new to the market and taking it by storm is an extraordinary example of the never say die attitude of the biz hack mentality. Ian uh, had the challenge of marketing his ice cream, which is sold at stores uh, in different parts of the country to the folks who live in those areas to drive them to the store to hopefully get them to buy his ice cream. So he had to market to the ice cream buyer, but the sales were happening for the most part through the retailer themselves. But you will see that he did manage to sell a pint of ice cream online. So without further ado, the amazing, the tenacious, the hardworking, the hard driving Ian Taput. So, hi. Um, and by the way, yes, it is a low calorie ice cream. So uh, Jennifer, uh, as Dan mentioned, it won't go to your hips. So, so basically, just in case you guys don't know, uh, Cloud and Joy is a unique, better for you dairy disruptor. That's the cleanest ingredient product of any healthy lifestyle ice cream with more appealing U USPs, unique selling points than any on the shelves. In fact, uh, we did a survey for one of our sales things and um, no other healthy dairy dessert make our games. Most even couldn't reach half. In fact, even we were a little bit shocked by how far ahead we were, actually. We thought some would come closer, but they didn't. Um, we're low calorie, low sugar, no sugar added. One flavor uses, does use raw unfiltered honey. Sugar alcohol free, low fat, low saturated fat and cholesterol, reduced net carbs, gluten free, soy free, egg free, uh, corn syrup free, non GMO ingredients, clean label. We don't hide anything between behind terms like natural flavors. Um, we're ethically and sustainably sourced and we're kosher. So Selena and I basically created, that's Selena there mostly, as you can see, and uh, some of our team, our CMO and our, our uh, social media manager. Um, Selena, and I, Selena and I created the formula for over a year after I recovered from a hiking accident that left me pre-diabetic from the injury, the medication and the inactivity. And both of us had an ice cream making hobby before the accident, actually, um, although she had started to focus more on healthy cooking. Um, even before my accident, but we kind of made an exception for ice cream. But once I recovered, um, we hadn't found anything that we really liked. So once I recovered, we decided to, uh, to take it to market. So as part of our commitment to do good when doing well, we also decided to make giving to our favorite charity, one we had actually done before we started the company, um, build it into the core of the company. So every single pint that's ever manufactured of Cloud and Joy, a portion goes to Heifer International, uh, which does cows and honeybees and helps with agricultural sustainability for underprivileged communities. Um, so basically we're targeting um, a growing market of health and socially conscious millennial and Zoomer consumers. But of course, everyone nowadays, especially after this pandemic, is really health conscious and they're all trying to lose the uh, quarantine 15 too. Um, and as part of, so um, I tested this assumption with some data mining on Facebook insights um, that he taught me how to do. And those interested in the big brand in our space were also interested in things like Fabletics and Quest Nutrition and did actually fit our demographic of women 21 to 55, because there's always what you think you know about your audience and what you really know about your audience, right? But we did test it. And then I further geo-targeted it to a 10 mile radius around every one of the stores, because as you mentioned, we do sell through stores. Um, my... Basically, our real world campaign is focused on a retail channel. And even though we do have a small direct e-commerce, it's very important to not cannibalize, but rather encourage the purchases at stores. So we're running another campaign outside that geographic area with a direct purchase order. Um, so after our initial awareness order, uh, awareness ad, the offer ad we made was that signing up will enter you into a $10 uh, gift card uh, contest um, in the Weiss area. And uh, the outside was $10 free off shipping, which we actually decided to take away the free shipping, make it $10. The real cost to ship this is 35, but we thought $10 is a good nominal amount um, because $10 free shipping on its own without it being a part of an offer wasn't actually encouraging sales. Um, so this was my sort of uh, 
the original thumb stopping video. Um, and this is the actual offer video. This is the landing page it went to. What we did is we actually followed up um, the sign up with a $25 extra offer that if you went to the store and you bought it, that you would actually be, uh, be entered into a, a contest for that. Um, so mapping out our customer journey and overlaying it onto our campaigns as we develop the messages and the flow interaction, which adds follow, which is on the what's on the thank you screen, the follow-up emails and the automatic drip nurture has been a great revelation because while I was familiar with the idea of a customer journey, like many things missing uh, was the applying it specifically. Um, basically we are at, well, I forgot to put my ad budget there, but the ad budget there uh, total was about 150 between three campaigns. Um, for the first awareness, campaign, we had a 4,984 4, impression. Um, we had a cost per thousand of 2067 with a playthrough rate of 65.49%, which was actually, I think, pretty high. Um, a conversion rate from that was 1.38% of people who actually went through to our website, even though that was not the goal of the original thing. Um, the cost per result was two cents. Um, from there, on our follow-up ad, our conversion rate was 0.49% with a cost per lead of $1.05. Um, one of the things is we obviously have to, because we do B2B to C, we have to take a little bit of a different approach in, um, in measuring our results. And so we did the quarterly sale. We're kind of thinking of developing a quarterly sales lift versus baseline through our retail channel. Um, because it's very unique in the grocery industry. They're very, uh, and because just because it's frozen, consolidated distribution is the only way to go. But interestingly, we did make $65 in uh, direct sales revenue because on our awareness ad, and uh, we basically were able through, thanks to a Facebook pixel we installed, uh, which was the new thing, which is my time is up. Um, what we installed, uh, we actually, I actually know that they went from the ad to our bounce to our page to bounce to our store and actually made a sale. So that wasn't the need. Um, real quick, um, I know I'm running out of time. How we applied the biz hack learning now. Um, one of the things we did is a more important in, in the immediate future is we actually took the lessons we learned from BizHack, we actually took our, not only the learnings, but the stuff we use to apply those learnings, sort of quick and dirty, and also the ability to express what we were doing with those learnings, we actually made them into a slide that we were using in our pitch decks to our B2B customers, because it all has to go to the distributors. Uh, groceries only want one touch point. And this slide, which is a direct result, which was added as a direct result of using BizHack, has actually got us to a second round of uh, leads on our retail. In fact, um, one result has been a golden ticket win. We actually won the 2021 golden ticket from the second largest distributor in the United States, which means they're going to fast track us into distributors without having to secure retailers and help us push it. And only one company wins that an entire year. Um, we did the presentation. Um, I integrated that slide. I integrated some of the stuff we did for BizHack along with some of the innovative ideas I came up as a result of BizHack and we got this. In fact, it was such a big deal that they actually uh, requested that we put out a big novelty ticket and take it. So this is actually in Chicago at Pop-Up Grocer, one of the pop-up events we were attending. Uh, real quick, sorry, uh, my big learnings, my biggest ahas were audience filtering and analytics and how to pipeline the customer journey. And one of the big revelations I think of this is how in 2021, even small businesses can harness the power, harness the power of big data to test audience demographics, psychographics, and interesting and, and interest in a way that was only available to big agencies with huge research budgets. I actually worked in an ad agency. I used to work Chris Border, Bogussi, Leo Burnett in the old school advertising before social media existed. I exited that industry. And trust me, research and all this stuff used to literally cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And the fact that small businesses can do it now, and they helped me unlock that because I knew the concepts of these things, but I did not know how to unlock it in a sort of a new digital era. So the power of retargeting lookalike audiences and custom audiences, the power of mapping the customer journey and using big data to create a funnel. What's next? Uh, basically helping our retail and channel partners get to the product out of their freezer cabinets and into the bags and the spoons of their customers, capturing more distributors and retailers, creating an SOP and roadmap using our tools for automating thing. Um, by the way, new creative concepts uh, based on what we dug and actually a little bit of Seth Godin. Um, 
how people want to feel because I actually, we did okay with our first set, but I actually think that being more aspirational, people don't care about the hole. They, people don't care about the drill. They don't care about the hole. They don't care about the bookshelf. They care about how the bookshelf that they made makes them feel right in terms of that. So we are actually, I'm actually revamping my uh, creative to focus on the heifer and also to kind of use the taste good, feel good, be good, do good uh, thing. And we're going to see how this works. If this works, it's going to be key on our packaging. And by the way, one last thing, um, I, someone, uh, Jennifer won it, but all of you guys, um, if you use the code bizhack on our site, we do do frozen shipping nationwide free for you guys. Um, you'll get $5 off the thing plus free shipping nationwide. The only caveat is you have to do six pints, uh, but just type in bizhack into the coupon code and it's there for you. Okay. That's it.